Today, we are live in the Adams Group studio right here in Missouri City, Texas. I would like to welcome our guest today, Will Rice. Will is the Strategic Relationships Manager at Homelight here in Houston, uh, which is proven track record Will has in business development, building teams, increasing revenue, committed to leveraging strong interpersonal skills. Took this right off of your profile. Nice. Uh, to build trust and convert prospects to long-standing clients, which seems like you've done a great job. Yes. Um, and Will is the strategic relations manager with Homelight, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna let you explain a little bit more what that is. Quick answer I have coming from Homelight's website is the essential, essential, I like that, technology platform used by hundreds and thousands of home buyers and sellers to partner with top real estate agents with any step of the home buying process. Thank you, Will, for coming. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So first off, Will, tell us a little bit before we get into home light, which mm -hmm. I know that's that's why we're here. Right. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and tell me how, like, you you have such a very uh, interesting background, I would say, and successful background. And I've heard some of your stories. Yes. Uh, I would love to hear kind of your career and then what brought you to home light. You know, financial industry primarily through my entire career. Um, financial advisor regional manager, alternative investing, uh, founded and ran a hedge fund for many years, sold that to a client uh, that lived in Mexico and was really searching for my next step, right? What what I need to do next? Uh, Simon Sinek actually played a very big role in that. Uh, I'll save that for another time. Um, but that's a very interesting story where I talked to him directly uh, on you know, finding your why or starting with why, which that was, he was, uh, that was the Ted talk that he yeah. became super famous. Was he, I mean, he was pretty famous before. No, he really wasn't. I mean, that really was the start. That was the okay. start. And crazy thing is I, I saw it, loved it, related to it, Googled his name, saw a phone number, called it. He answered. Wow. Um, we had few conversations over a few months, really helped me find my why and what I should be doing next. That actually took me into the title industry. Um, we did some about 25% holdings in the, the hedge fund with real estate. Um, so I kind of parlayed that into what I did with, uh, with First American Title. Uh, took some time to, to spend with family after I'd been with Homelight or with uh, First American for many years. Uh, and then when I came back into the industry, um, I just kind of looked around and really didn't know anything about Homelight at the time. Uh, ran across a, a LinkedIn post they had. I was like, wow, that, that looks like, that sounds like me. And the more and more I spoke to Homelight, I actually went through a very extensive interview process. Um, and the more I learned about it, I was like, wow, this is the future of real estate. Um, and so it was kind of a, a chance happening, but it was, it, it's like a match made in heaven. I mean, it's, it truly is my ideal situation to be in. Now, before you get into like the ins and outs of Homelight, when you looked at it and saw that it was, as you said, the future of the real estate industry. What was it that made you go, this is the future of the real estate yeah, industry? Yeah, I, I think it was really the technology they had, uh, the simplicity that they try to bring to every real estate transaction. Uh, you know, kind of one of our mantras is simple, certain, and satisfying for every real estate transaction. Um, and the technology and the fact that they're a tech company, you know, that prop tech company that wants to keep the agent as the primary focus of every transaction. I think that's very different than any other oh, prop tech thought, company, yeah, yeah. right? Typically they want to minimize or eliminate the agent. And, and quite frankly, that's the easy thing to do. It adds right to the bottom line. Um, but I think long-term you must have that real estate agent in every transaction. So there's been a lot, and I'm not going to mention them on this podcast, but there's a lot of companies out there that have always said, we want to be agent centric. Mm -hmm. What has, what would you say, I mean, in home light to this point, I mean, to this day is still very agent centric, but what differentiates that? And I mean, we can see little moves where people are moving away from the agent from other yeah. companies, but what would you say from home light? Like what's keeping them toward that and not maybe chasing the extra dollars to get that? You know, I, I think it all is grounded in how we were founded quite frankly. Right. Um, Drew, uh, who actually has some ties to Texas, Drew Ur, he was uh, actually a Texas A&M grad. Uh, his going. undergraduate uh, at Texas A&M. I don't think we talk about that enough uh, <laughs> here, here in Texas. You should, yes. Exactly. Uh, and then he went to Stanford for his MBA. Um, he was later looking to buy a house in San Francisco, his first house, and almost lost that house due to the agent he was working with. Yeah. Right. And he found very quickly that it was... Easy to find a realtor, very difficult to find a great one. 
Right. And he just thought there's got to be a better way. Uh, and that day on a napkin, he wrote down some hand matching from a referral standpoint. How do we match up buyers and sellers to top agents? He got with some of the top minds that, that he knew from Brown University, MIT, Stanford, Harvard, some of those top business minds. And they came up with some algorithms that, that did that matching. That was kind of how Homelight started. And so because we were founded in the agent is such a big part of the transaction. Right. And it's why we were founded. I think it will always be that way. Got it. And, it, you know, because I think that's probably like when a lot of real estate agents um, and, you know, I'm a coach. I'm a coach in Tom Ferry Network. A lot of my clients, a lot of them are very skeptical of a lot of referral exchanges, as mm -hmm. we call them, mm -hmm. because they're like, hey, you know, and, and people, who you know, giving money to Zillow Realtor or whatever it might be. And they're they're doing it because they're seeing success. But then they're like scared at one some point this thing's going to turn on me. Yeah. And then they're going to put me out of business. And there's a lot of skepticism of these type of companies. So, and quite frankly, there should be, Yeah. you know, I mean, to be honest, there should be, um, that skepticism, right? You're running a business. You want to make sure you're not jeopardizing the future of that business. And so therefore finding that right referral partner and that for, right real estate partner in general is, is very key and you should do your research. So when it, you come in, going back to your, it starts with the why, for your why, I mean, we kind of skipped over that a little mm -hmm. bit, but I just want to go back for just a second. Sure. What do you feel like it was for you that was the why that pushed you to this? So, you know, I found out in, in my talks with Simon that really, I mean, I used to coach a lot of, of baseball, right? So I played right. baseball in college, uh, coached a lot of select ball and did very well with that. I never got paid for that, didn't ever need to be paid for it. It was just very fulfilling. And so when with Simon, we looked at what was it about that coaching that that was so fulfilling. And it was taking my knowledge, my experience and helping someone with less knowledge, less experience, get to a, su a success scenario, right? Where they are successful in a much shorter period of time. So kind of being that coach and helping them along the way. And this role is essentially that, right? I'm taking my, uh, what is it now? 30 years, 30 years of business experience in four different industries uh, and bringing that business aspect to real estate. Uh, and it allows me to do that, but not only do that, but have some real estate solutions that are state of the art from a technology standpoint. And again, making that transaction simple, certain and satisfying. So four, four industries, what were the four industries again? Uh, stocks and bonds, right? Sure. And so, and then that kind of went into money management. Okay. Right. Well, actually, before stocks and bonds, actually, I, I uh, crazy thing. And, and so, you know, we talk about our struggles in life and, and what make us who we are today. So my oldest son is 35 years old. He was born my senior year in high school. Right. So yeah. not not an easy way to start life. Right. right? Um, don't regret it a minute. Right. Um, but very difficult. I wouldn't recommend that path for anyone. Right. Right. But that doesn't mean your life is over. And I even had teachers at that time saying, Hey, your life is over. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was kind of that drive to make sure it wasn't. So my, my son's mother's parents owned some restaurants and it was kind of like, I'd never really even had a job up to that point. And they said, well, we're going to train you. Her stepdad said, I'm going to train you to run a restaurant. And so we really took that. I mean, I took everything from a business aspect. I was probably, but I mean, I did go through college and finish college, but just what I learned from him in the four years that I worked for that restaurant, he had three of them, uh, was pretty amazing what I learned. Right. So that was kind of my initial, uh, you know, phase into business. And then it went into the investment arena. Uh, and then that investment arena was, you know, managing money, stocks and bonds. There you go. <laughs> stocks and bonds into hedge fund manager and into alternative investing. And although those are a little bit different, although it's still financial, it's a little bit different industries and in how we approach that. Can I add, I mean, you said, I always ask, uh -huh. what, what can I not talk about? Uh -huh. the, that program that you created, am I allowed to jump into that? Sure, or? you can say that. Because I, I, I thought that was like the coolest thing, but explain, because yeah. I do a little bit of option trading here mm -hmm. and there. And this was like, Wow, this is genius, but explain a little bit what it is. So it's, it's trading in the futures market, and this is what we did with the hedge fund. We trade in the futures market, but it's an algorithmic trading, right? Uh, automated trading system that essentially I just take, you know, I took my investing rules, my trading rules, got with a programmer, say, hey, put this into a, in a program, 
and you pretty much turn it on and it trades in the day. It's a day trading program. So it buys on certain signals, sells on certain signals. At the end of the day, if we're still in it, it, it liquidates so that you're in cash at the right. end of the day. That took many years to get to that point, right? right? Um, you but know, like you, an AI day trader. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's in, and so that kind of was the hedge fund, and then I actually sold that in a subscription basis for many years. I would have been a subscriber. Uh, and then, uh, and now I, I I use it with with you know my money and as well as some some family. Is it uh, by the way, real quick? Was it like a level of risk to it, or was it just like you pick your like if you're subscribing, you pick your level of risk because obviously you can't perfectly predict or you'd be yeah it's yeah you're, you're certainly not going to be right all the time but it's it's a matter of when you're wrong you you're you're wrong for a very little amount of money low right? risk low risk high it, reward, it's yeah. still risk right? right anytime you have risk of losing money and even if it's a small amount of risk and you lose money continually it could be very risky right so i wouldn't say this is you know and you're also trading futures and commodities so it is it is risky, right? This is not something that you would say, "Hey, I need to get six percent, and you're getting fifteen, so I want to do that," right? right. So it's not it, it's not for everyone, but it's for a small percentage uh, to diversify your portfolio. Got it. Yeah, that's cool. I just wanted to bring that in because yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. So um, you're you're now with Home Light, uh, Houston being one of which started. I mean, when did it actually start in Houston? By the way, Home Light. You know, I, I have some referral agents that I work with from a referral standpoint back to 2012, right? So that was like the first part of the referral business from, from Homelight was 2012. Uh, so we do have some partners here in Houston that were in at that point. Uh, we really didn't start generating or developing Houston um, until about a year, a little over a year ago when I came on board. Uh, and we really started putting the money in into our other solutions that we'll talk about shortly that are you know really trying to make that transaction more simple certain and satisfying versus just the referral aspect of it because it's it all and, and give me if i'm wrong it all start because i got involved as a real estate agent um uh maybe f three four years ago mm -hmm. and it was purely referral right and that is that how even back when drew started it mm -hmm. it was purely referral purely referral right and as it started growing he just said there's got to be other aspects of the real estate transaction that we can do that will help us with that simple, certain, satisfying mantra, right? So he created the Home Light Home Loans. So we have a lending division. We have Home Light uh, Settlement, which is a title division. Uh, and then we started coming up with the solutions to help drive that, right? Um, you know, our cash offer program, our tr trade-in program, our simple sell program, uh, along with others that we are beta testing now that will, again, add value to that transaction. And just for you guys that are listening that have no idea if you've never heard of Home Light, just so you know, I mean, and again, that it was basically Drew wanted to match people up mm -hmm. with the top realtor. And so if you're wondering, like, is Home Light where I'm at? I would simply ask you, go to Google and Google top realtor in whatever city. Here in Houston, you guys are coming up like yep. everywhere. And mm -hmm. I don't know what the marketing dollars is for that, but I know you're paying. <laughs> that, that's paying, not in my territory yes, either. That's pay, You're paying something to be up there. Yes. But um, that being said, uh, and I do, I think the thing that's really good about you guys, you require a high level accountability from the agents that mm -hmm. you're referring to. I know that because I'm on the other side of that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, the thing that I would, I, I guess next question is, so you had the referral just for someone who's, not like e whether it's a real estate agent or it's um, someone who's looking for a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. how, what does that process look like? Yeah. So from an agent standpoint, you can go in, you can create a profile. Uh, there's a lot of metrics that go into, it does a, do you get that referral, right? Geographically, what is your statistics when it comes to, I'm representing sellers, what's your list of price ratio, list of sell, uh, sell pr ratios, how many days on market, all the things you would think about that would go to how do you determine top agents uh, and that kind of goes into that metric uh, geographic being a key component right and so anyone can sign up for referrals to offer the other programs that we have it would it really takes a partnership right so that's a transactional side and where i come into play is cr is introducing these other products and the other products the other solutions are really for partnerships Right. And, right. And, and it truly is a partner. As you know, it's it's work on your part. It's work on our part. There's feedback, both negative and positive, so that we all grow and we become better. And ultimately, we have it a win, win, win situation. Right. It's a win for your clients. It's a win for you. And it's a win for home light. That's the type of transactions we look for. Do you ever kick real estate agents out? I try not to. I don't like to do that part. Um, but there are times where 
there's just not a good fit, right? Yeah. And I think that's, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's with anything, yeah. right? I mean, that's with anything. Sometimes there's, you, you want it there to be a fit, right? but you come down and there's just not a fit. Well, I mean, it, and two, it's like, if you're trying to go, Hey, we're going to match you with the top realtor, you're, you're going to send those to the guys that are most likely going to help achieve the goals of your clients. Right. Mm-hmm. So started with the referral, which uh, has, has been great for a lot of agents. I know lots of agents have done really well in that. It's been a great partnership. We've d- had a great relationship in that, in that arena. Then these products started coming on to the mm-hmm. market that you guys were bringing. And right. really, from my perspective, and obviously I'm in the Tom Ferry coaching world, I'm involved in lots of in, in Encompass, the brokerage we're with. I haven't seen hardly anything like this. So let's start with what was the groundbreaking product you would say first that kind of came in and what was the result you saw from it? Yeah, it, the first step was cash offer, right? And that's where we turn buyers into cash buyers. Right. And, and we're I think it was just primarily because that's the market we were in. Right. right. Very competitive, uh, multiple offer situation. Uh, and some people get caught up in the fact that that's the only time you really need cash. Right. And, and maybe we'll touch on that and, and see if, you know, the other areas that you can use it. Um, but I think that's really why that came out first. Right. Help your average buyer be more competitive against some of these institutionals. Obviously, I mentioned I ran a hedge fund, tremendous amount of hedge fund activity in real estate. Um, an investment that investment companies that are just buying them to lease them out. Right. Right. And so we want the average person to be able to compete against that. So it turns their, their buying power, their, their approval with home light home loans into a true cash offer. Right. And so the seller, the listing agent sees that as a cash offer. They want cash because it adds certainty to the real estate transaction. You're able to get that accepted typically at a lower value than what you'd have to offer with uh, with a finance offer. And that would be because they're going, it's a guarantee, less risk for the seller. Mm-hmm. So therefore I'm going to take the less risky offer cash. I mean, cash Absolutely. is king. And then, you know, yeah. So cash, obviously less chances of it busting out and not be, you know, not going to, uh, to closing, uh, but also a quick close. We can close as quick as eight days, right? So the quicker you close, the less uncertainty there is. Right. Uh, so very powerful. What, and, and who qualifies for cash offer? Like yeah. if, if you have a, a buyer out there, want to buy right now and use cash offer, how do they qualify? Yeah, it's going to be your typical conventional borrowers right now. Uh, 620 credit score or higher would be great. At least 5% down uh, with some reserves in case there's an appraisal gap situation. Um, and, and that's primarily what we look at, right? If they can qualify for a conventional loan, they could be a good fit for a cash buyer. And if they're, but I mean, you guys are probably protecting your appraisal gap too. So you're, I mean, how many appraisal gaps are getting in through the doors? Is it? Yeah. So we try to minimize that. So not only do we, uh, with home light home loans, we would approve your, uh, do a full underwrite for your client in 24 hours. Yeah. Right. So now we know we can do that loan. Nothing's going to pop up and, and, you know, make it go astray. So we're just stepping up and upfronting the cash for them to pay cash for the home. Right. And they ultimately go through and get their loan. Got right. It. So, um, but we also approve the property, right? So we're kind of, you can say that we're underwriting the property. And really what we're looking at is, is there going to be appraisal gap? What is that potential for an appraisal gap on a very conservative method? And does your client have the ability to cover that appraisal gap? So it allows, this all happens before you even make an offer. So it allows you to have a more educated offer for both you and your client. Right. Yeah. How has it been received with, uh, I mean, I've, I, we've used it a lot, mm-hmm. but just from your experience overall, has it been received from other agents who are accepting this going, what all the, you know, this cash offer, have they, how, how's that been? Yeah. It's it, at the beginning a year ago, um, was difficult, more difficult as we do more and more in the Houston area, more and more agents are getting familiar with that. Um, uh, but we also, uh, we also supply an offer letter that explains the program. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think with cash offer in some instances, it's even better than an all cash offer, right? Yeah. Because a cash offer can still last minute decide, Hey, we're going to, decide not to go through right with our cash offer home light cash offer we actually say once we get past the option period home light is guaranteeing closing which is crazy yeah so if something happened in the loan let's say the end client the the buyer loses their job right we're past option period for whatever reason they can't move forward home light is still guaranteeing we're going to close on that so now home light will step in they would assign the contract to home light home light steps in and buys adding more certainty to the seller Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's been great for us as, uh, as our team. And I mean, I, I don't know the exact number, but we've gotten a lot of clients that would have a had to pay a lot more or B wouldn't have even got the house had mm-hmm. they not used cash offers. So, right. For sure. Uh, all right. Next product. 
uh, what was up next? What would you say? That trade came, in. Trade in came through. Trade okay. in. And this is for, you know, your sellers that also want to buy. Which partly we saw this in the boom like during COVID, mm -hmm. it was like sellers coming up going, Hey Ryan, we want to list our house, but how we're going to buy a house. And before not even knowing trading, it was like, you probably ought to stay in a motel or hotel room <laughs> right. and sell it, go move there for a minute. And then we'll figure it out because no one's going to accept a contingency because everybody's mm -hmm. in Houston. Everybody's come from California, Chicago, and they're bringing cash with them. And that's what you're competing against. And then it was like, Will calls, Hey, I've got this product called trading that might help. I mean, it was just like, Oh my goodness. So tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. It's for those people that exact situation, right? If you want to sell a home, move into a new home. If you go out and put an offering that's contingent on the sale of your primary residence right now, it's not going to be accepted, right? I mean, very difficult to get accepted. Uh, so what do we do to get rid of that? Right? So they can, like you said, move into a hotel, move in with a relative, <laughs> Uh, double move storage, all of that hassle that goes three with month, it. Three month lease back, which <laughs> hoping right that, exactly, yeah. and and it just makes it very difficult, right? A lot of uncertainty, difficult situation to deal with, a lot of stress, uh, and so what this does is we approve their property, we un, uh, able to unlock some of the equity they have in their home. Most people are going to use the equity from their home to purchase the new home. We time it so that essentially HomeLite is coming in to buy their home. Two days prior, we'll close two days prior to their new home. So they move out of their existing home, move right into the next home. And then we go in and do the repairs. We front the cost for those repairs. You help, you know, work with your vendors, the, your contractors that you work with to get it all repaired, get it in the best shape possible. So now it's looks fantastic. There's no one there living in it to have to keep it up to, you know, a, the clean standard of showing the property. And there's no scheduling conflict. So now you have more buyers coming in, which typically leads to a higher price. And in the end, which is much different than most programs, once it does sell in the open market, they're in their new house enjoying it. It sells in the open market. Now they're going to get a second check for 100% of that upside. Yeah. Right? So they participate all the way to the upside. Really the only different financial uh, situation between the stress and selling, uh, traditionally selling it and using the trade-in program is a trade-in fee. And here in Houston, that runs at about 1.5% on average. Got it. Okay. And it's that simple. I mean, it... The, I, I will say like it feels much more complicated than it is and it's hard sometimes to explain because it i mean unfortunately it's hard to go all right they're buying my house i'm buying this house i'm buying it back from them I mean, it's hard to explain yeah. that to a client yeah. it's more simple when you go through the process absolutely but i mean what i've tried to tell my clients i'm like hey let me just tell you if you did not have this here's what your transaction is going to look like and the bottom line is you're going to save more money, even with the one and a half, whatever percent mm -hmm, it is, mm -hmm. you know? So that's There awesome. is a return on that investment, right? Yeah. So it's, let's look at it as a one and a half percent investment that you can get a return on. Typically right. that's three to five times what that return would be. And the positive, which you didn't mention this, is that you could actually combine trade in and cash offer. Yes. So not only can you not have to make a contingency and you get to buy that house and have a stress-free move, mm -hmm. but you can make an offer cash, cash, which then allows you to not pay as much and have very good competitive level against everybody else. Absolutely. So in a nutshell, think of that offer that looks like this. You have a home to sell, but you don't have to put that into the offer, right? So now you're making an all cash offer. You can close in as quick as eight days and you can potentially give them the, the seller of that new property a, a no charge lease back, right? right? If you put all of that into an offer, you've moved way up that list way of being up. accepted. Right. And then, and in Houston, we're seeing the market balance itself out a little mm -hmm. bit more. I mean, still, I mean, I was telling you yesterday, I mean, we still had 12 offers on a, on right. a but it's balancing itself a little bit, but now you're really going to stand out, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I hear a lot of people talk that, oh, now we don't need cash offers because it's getting less competitive. We're seeing cash offers being accepted at a higher level now because you're not competing against other cash as much right. as you were before, right. right? So it all is in the terms of your offer, not necessarily the highest offer that gets accepted. And we really are seeing trade in, in, in the next product, the next solution we'll talk about is simple sell. We're really seeing that skyrocket. So, so jump into that simple sell. That's your third product. Mm -hmm. And tell us about that. And really simple sell is kind of that I buyer, right? That I buyer. And what I mean by that is someone's coming in, paying you cash for your home. You don't have to worry about repairs. You can close fairly quickly um, and, and not have to worry about any listings, nothing, right? So it's really that simple, certain, satisfying mantra that we talk about. Um, and so we go in, you would have an agent like yourself. One of our partners would go in, we do a CMA, 
value the property, take pictures, get a true essence of the as is condition. And we have a team that does the same. So it's your human value of the home, our human value of the home. And then we also have an economic model that does the same thing, right? From an, from an AI standpoint. And so we take all the three of those together. We come up with a valuation, which is competitive in the market. And then we simply offer 90% of that value net of all fees, right? So no closing costs, no realtor fees, nothing. It's all built in. Again, simple sale, right? Is we, we have right. a name that way for a reason. Well, and there's going to be the people that are listening to this, watching this, and they're going to go, what's the, de- what's the catch? What's mm-hmm. the deal? Because I've had Zillow and OfferPad and Open Door come in and they give me this flashy price. And by the time the thing's done, it's like half the cost of my house. So yeah, t- and, tell us about that. Yeah, in a typical iBuyer situation, they're going to throw out a big number. They haven't even looked at the house, right? right? They throw out a big number just to pull you in. And then they say, okay, we need these repairs, this repairs, this repair, this closing cost, this this fee. And before you know it, it's it's a very small percentage compared to what you thought you were getting. We do a lot of that work up front before we even give an offer, right? So we're, we have an agent that goes out and views, like yourself, goes out and views the property, takes pictures of the property, does an evaluation of the property. We do an evaluation of the property. We have a, uh, an AI version that does evaluation before we even give a preliminary offer. And, and our, uh, we pride ourselves in that preliminary offer is very close to the final offer, right? right. And, and we want it to stay that way. And that's why we go through so much work up front. We can't give an instant offer like, oh, yeah, we'll pay this because we've never seen the house. We don't know that yet. Right. Right. So we want to make sure that we have someone going in and actually boots on the ground looking at the property. So we get a true evaluation of it. Um, If they say, yeah, preliminary number looks great. We pay for inspections. We go out, we get some inspections. If there's no adjustments, we give a final offer within 24 hours. Once we put that uh, track contract together, we can close in as quick as eight days. Yeah. And I mean, and two, the other thing that I think is very different with all three of your programs, that's a little bit different. I mean, like you look at the offer pad or the open door, um, they're giving you that initial offer. It's probably going to change a lot by the time it's done with mm-hmm. simple sale. I mean, from my experience, it's been mm-hmm. very close to that. Yeah. So if it's that 90% value as is, and a lot of people go, well, mm-hmm. my as is, is what it would be on the market. Eh, yeah. Yeah. Don't do anything in your house and yeah. let's see how it goes. But yeah. as is market value is as close to 90% as anybody else can do. And the other thing I would say is comparatively to all these other companies, every single um, product you have here involves an agent. That is correct. And agents are getting some type of a commission mm-hmm. through all of those products. The simple sell thing I love just because... You're not using AI or some guy from California comes in and tells you how much worth you're going to a real estate agent going, what do you think it's Mm -hmm. worth? Let's do our AI. Let's do our, and let's collaborate and figure that out. Yeah. And if those are typically, they come in pretty close, but if they're way off, we have discussions with you as the agent. So, okay, how did you get that value? This is how we, and we come up with that true value. Got it. Okay. Uh, and then real quick, home light home loans, which is you've got home light home loans, title companies. If you're using trade in or cash offer, you're going to definitely want to utilize, you don't have to, but you want to utilize home light home loans because it's going to save you in the end. Yep. Would you, people would say, all right, we have to use your lender. Is that going to be competitive rates with everybody else? Yeah, absolutely. I get that question a lot, right? If you're, you're able to give us all of this, there's got to be a catch somewhere, right? And so people automatically go to the rate situation. We're very transparent in our rates. You can go to homelighthomeloans.com, click on view rates, answer a few questions, and it'll give you our current rate, right? And then you can shop that around. You can see that we're very comparative uh, uh, to, to just about anyone in the industry. Okay. And then um, last, uh, last question before I go into my rapid fire is... Where do you think the real estate market is going to be going into the next one to three years? <laughs> I and there's, there's, I mean, we all, yeah. like a big, remember the beginning of the year, everybody mm-hmm. was like, we won't top 5% in interest rates and mm-hmm. look where we're at today. This yeah. is summer 2022, by the way, if you're yeah. listening. Yeah. So where's the market going? I, I will tell you this. I really don't see, nor do any of the analysts that I speak with. And I still talk to quite a few analysts in the hedge fund industry. Um, uh, no one that I talk to, no one that I rub elbows with will say that we're headed for a crash, right? I just don't think that's that's coming. We're in a much different market than we were before, um, good and bad, right? I mean, interest rates are moving like we really haven't seen in a very long time. Right. Um, and we'll leave the interest rate discussion for some other time. Sure. Um, but just from me trading interest rates in the past and, and with the hedge fund, we traded you know interest rates quite a bit. Um, we're in a situation where we could see a much higher interest rate move than people think. And I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, 
But as far as the market is concerned, I, I think we slow down in the price appreciation. I don't I think it's unreal, unrealistic to think we keep the pace we've had the last two years. Uh, we slow down in that. Um, but I think and I think we slow down overall in a f in some of the transactions. And so we don't see home prices escalating like they have the last couple of years. Right. But we we see it kind of as a steady move forward. Right. Um, and not necessarily declining. Right. Some people are calling for a big decline in prices. From what I see, from my experience, I don't think we're headed for that kind of market. Um, if from from a price standpoint, there are always going to be certain pockets of price range. There's always going to be certain pockets of neighborhoods that are going to be very desirable. That's we're going to have very little effect, right? Um, you're going to have some other areas that may not be as nice, that may be a little less increase in prices. Um, overall, I think we're still in a, I think we get back to what I would consider a healthy market. Good. Okay. And what's interesting too is, so I get a lot of data sources from keeping current matters, all this. There was a, and this was actually an Investopedia. Like I've, I've seen a lot of these like reels and podcasts coming on where these guys are like, we're about to go through a crash. I mean, like smart guys. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't, but their data that they're getting, I'm like, I mean, we, I have here, um, literally Fannie Mac, uh, Freddie, uh, yeah. Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, CoreLogic, uh, NBA, Zellman, all said for 2022, we will still see an average, and this is all the average of all of them, 8.9% mm -hmm. increase in home values. 2023, 5%. 2024, 4%. I'm like, i sorry. I just don't buy into this like we're going to yeah. bust thing. You know, and, and let's say it's if we don't see that. Well, let's just say we only see half of those. Or let's just say home prices stay where they're at for a couple of years. That's not a crash. Right. Right. That's not the end of the world. People are still going to buy houses. People are still going to move. People are going to still need to be transferred to different areas, regardless of what happens with interest rates, what, regardless of what happens with the market. Now, you will have pockets of the country like California that will probably see bigger price swings. They yeah. always have. Right. Right. In Texas and Houston, I don't think we see those price swings. Yeah. OK. Uh, well, again, thank you. I'm going to take you through some rapid fire here real quick. Oh, I got to get ready for this. And so kind of the rule here is one sentence max which some of these are going to be hard to do, but you just right. got to try to do your best. Okay. Um, what's an insult that you've received that you're proud of? Um, you're a young dad. I like that. That's great. You talked about that earlier. If you could go back and give your 18 year old self one piece of advice, what would it be? When and when not to get in and out of the market. <laughs> Okay, got it. All right. And then um, this is hard to do in one sentence, but the best you can. What does your morning routine look like? Oh, morning routine. Right now, it's a little different. I have a couple of my grandkids that are with me. So that morning routine is much different than normal, right? So normally, if, if they weren't there, it would be uh, up by, you know, alarm usually goes off around 530. I'm a snoozer. So 545, 6, up. Uh, try to hit the treadmill, push up sit-ups type of routine. A uh, cup of coffee, get ready, start looking at what the market's doing, and then jump into uh, my daily routine. Sweet. Introvert or extrovert? Ooh, that's interesting. So I actually have this conversation with my daughter because she's very much like me. Mm -hmm. um, it's work, extrovert, personal life, introvert. Perfect. I'm kind of the same. Almost identical to that. Yeah. Uh, if you won $10 million tomorrow, where would you, what would you spend it on? Uh, family. Family. Nice. I would, my family, my parents have lived in the same house for as long as I remember. I would get them a new house, number one. What's the most common myth about real estate? Com what's the most common myth about real estate? That it's easy. Um, favorite productivity app? Oh, goodness. I don't, I don't have an answer on that one right off the top of my head. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one for there. Yeah. Sorry, I got the wrong one on that one. All right. At what time of day do you get your best work done? Uh, before noon. Favorite football team? San Francisco 49ers. Houston Texans, Texans close second. Wow, 49ers? Yeah. Group. There's a story behind that. You want to hear it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go for it. So I grew up in Dallas. Yep. Everyone in Dallas is a Dallas Cowboy fan. Right. Uh, it was around early 80s. May have even been 80. Um, San Francisco was beating the Cowboys in the playoffs quite regularly. 
And I think I just jumped on that bandwagon because everybody else was upset and I was kind of taking that contrarian view of who I want. And then from then on, plus they had Jerry Rice, which yeah. I kid with people tell them that's my uncle. Um, <laughs> and so you have some, you know, Jerry Rice jerseys, Joe Montana, Dwight Clark. You had to go with it, right? <laughs> I uh, I grew up in D.C., so I'm a Washington uh, Commanders fan now. Yeah. I think they should have stayed with Washington football. Team. Yes, I did. everybody said the same thing. Okay, favorite restaurant in Houston? Oh, probably Federal American Grill because I'm good friends with the owners. Got it. Last question. And it's my favorite question. If money was no issue and time to fly and travel was no issue and you had 24 hours, where would you go? What would you do? 24 hours. Money's no issue. Travel's no issue. What are you doing? Bora Bora. You're going to Bora Bora and you're going to just, just hang out. Just hang out. Chill. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, thank you, Will. Will Rice with Home Light. Thanks uh, for having me. If you're looking for Will online, you can find him on Instagram at Will Rice, the title guy. Mm -hmm. I like that. And I like your character too. You like him? Yes. That's a good fiber investment. Was it? Yes. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Will. And we will see you next time on Ryan Real Estate, the podcast. Take care. Thank you.